Because I was afraid to speak when I was just a lad. My father gave my nose a tweak and told me I was bad. But then one day I learned a word that saved my aching nose. The biggest word you ever heard, and this is how it goes. Photosynthesis. Five syllables. Can you say it with me? Clap along. Photosynthesis. I know, my steam friends love big new words. Hello, my explorer friends. I talked to Miss Nicole, and she told me that you guys have been talking about flowers and plants. So I thought we could dig really deep and get super nerdy and learn about plants, about the parts of plants, and about photosynthesis. My goodness. That's such a long word. I know you guys love learning new long words. Look how long that word is. Photosynthesis. You can impress your friends with that one, that's for sure. We're going to talk about pollination of flowers, which is how they get fertilized, fertilization. We're going to talk about seeds and germination, which is when the seeds sprout and little roots come out and dig down and little seedlings come out and pop up and then they grow into new plants we are going to talk about chlorophyll which is just the green stuff in plants and the four kinds of green plants that do photosynthesis and have chlorophyll algae which guys remember how while Miss Jones was out, I kind of forgot about cleaning the fish tank for a little while? You know all that green gunk that grew on it? Yeah, that was algae. Don't tell Miss Jo. Don't tell her I forgot to clean the fish tank. I mean, we did it eventually, but you know, don't get me in trouble. I totally forgot. And we got algae everywhere! Ah! Then there's moss, which is little green plants that grow along the ground and they like to live where it's really damp. And then there are ferns that have been around since the age of the dinosaurs. They are so old. And then there's the plants that you probably think of when you think of plants like flowers and trees, and those are called phanerograms. I like that word. <laughs> Say it one more time together. Phanerograms. It just sounds funny to me. And we are going to learn about creepers that grow along the ground. Creepers. And we're going to learn about climbers that like to climb trees and like to climb on things. Do you like to climb? And we are going to talk about how leaves have veins in them. Did you know that? They have veins in them, just like we have veins in our body. It's called our circulatory system. Circulatory system is how the blood circulates through your body, through your veins. There are the veins in your body. And leaves use veins to carry water up from the roots, up through their stems or their trunks, and out into the leaves. And we are going to talk about the pygmy marmoset. He is the smallest monkey in the whole wide world, and he's so cute, and he lives in the rainforests in Brazil. And he likes to climb trees, and he likes to hide in plants, and he likes to eat fruit. I'm going to tell you something silly about him later, about what happens when he eats fruit and how it helps the plants to grow. That's my friend, the pygmy marmoset. All right, guys. Are you ready to get into this and learn all about photosynthesis? Let's do it. Okay, steam friends, let's talk about plants. Let's talk about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Huh. Five syllables. Such 
such a big word. But photosynthesis is just how plants use carbon dioxide and sunlight to make food for themselves, called chlorophyll. They like sugar. It's not so good for us, but plants, they like sugar. They make it from sunlight and water and carbon dioxide in a process called photosynthesis. And do you remember we talked about how when we breathe out carbon dioxide, the plants breathe it in and then they breathe out oxygen for us. Let's take three deep breaths for the plants. Are you ready? One. Your plants say thank you. Now, the plants that like chlorophyll are your green plants. Chlorophyll is green. It's just the green stuff in plants. And there are four kinds of green plants that use photosynthesis. There's algae, which is like the little slimy bits that get in water. Have you ever seen them? Have you ever forgotten to clean the fish tank? tell Miss Joan, but when I was in the explorer's class, I forgot to clean the fish tank for a little while, and we got all kinds of algae. It was green and slimy and gross. Shh, don't tell on me. There's moss that likes to live in damp areas, and it grows out along the ground. There's ferns that were around so long before even the dinosaurs. <laughs> and there's phenerograms. Whew, there's another big one, phenerograms. And that's just flowers and trees and the plants that we see all the time. Should we do a tree pose? Let's do a tree pose for the trees. Ready? Stand on one foot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch feet. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Now, all of these venerograms I was telling you about have different parts. They have stems or trunks. They have leaves. They have roots. The roots dig down deep into the soil and soak up the water. And do you know the plants just like us have veins? They have veins. Have you ever looked at a leaf closely and seen the veins? That is how the water gets to the leaves. It travels up through the roots, up through the stem or the trunk if it's a tree, into the leaves through the veins. That's where the magic happens. That's where photosynthesis happens. Okay. Now, there are different ways that plants can reproduce reproduce or get fertilized. They can get it through pollinization, which is the flowers have these little bits of pollen on the end and then butterflies or bees come along and get that little bit of pollen on their sticky feet because it's sticky. It's sticky and it gets right on their feet and then they fly to the next flower and it goes to the next flower. And that's how the flowers get fertilized. Now, after the flower has been fertilized, then it can make seeds. Plants grow from seeds, but I bet you knew that, right? I know. So, my favorite flower is the sunflower. And on a sunflower, you can see the seeds right there in the middle. The flower grows, the seeds grow on it, then the seed germinates falls to the ground, and it makes a new little shoot. And it grows into another flower. Look at that pattern. We love patterns in nature, right? We've talked about a lot of those. And you've got the dandelion. You guys, 
all seen the dandelion, right? It makes its seeds like this and they get caught on the wind, fall to the ground, germinate, and make a new dandelion. Have you ever wished on a dandelion before? Let's make a wish on a dandelion, ready? <sighs> Blow those seeds everywhere. Blow them, the dandelions will thank you and then you'll have even more dandelions. Now, there are two other kinds of plants that I want to talk to you about. One is called a climber. It climbs trees. Do you like to climb trees? It climbs up the tree so it can get high, so it can get the sunlight that it needs in its leaves. And then there are creepers. They creep along the ground and grow their plants along the ground. One of the, my favorite creepers is the pumpkin. I thought we could do the five little pumpkins rhyme. Would you like to do that with me? Okay. Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, there are witches in the air. The third one said, but we don't care. The fourth one said, let's run and run and run. The fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. Ooh, went the wind and out went the lights. And five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. Hello, Toodle Noodles. Are you ready to craft with me? Okay, you need a paper towel roll or toilet paper roll, some paper. Now I just went in on my paper because it was just boring and white. So I took a sponge and some watercolors and just dabbed it around to make a background. You do not need to do that. You can work on white paper or you can draw yourself a little picture, make some grass at the bottom, maybe a sun up in the sky, or you could paint your sky blue and your ground green. Whatever you want to do, this is gonna be your picture. You can make it as complicated or as easy as you want to. Now, if you have little fingers and can't work one of these yet, you can use fingerprints later. But I would like my big kids to work those fine motor skills if you have a Q-tip around the house, that would be great. And then you're just gonna need some paint, some yellow paint. I am going to use green paint because I have it for my stem, but you can draw your stem with a green marker if you want to. And I am going to use this really dark brown for my seeds in the center of my sunflower. You can use black if you have it or any brown you've got. All right, let's get started. I'm going to cut my paper towel roll in half. You might have two, or you might have two toilet paper rolls, but I want two stampers. And I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna cut lines into my paper towel roll. My big kid should be able to do this, but maybe if you can't, you could ask your mom or dad for a little bit of help. See? It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to spread it out like this. It's going to make a flower shape. See? Okay. And I'm going to do the other one. Because I want to use two colors of yellow, but you do not have to. You can use whatever you have or whatever you want. You can use orange. You can use red. It's your flower. There we go. Spread this guy out. Got a nice little flower shape. yellow down just onto like a paper plate or whatever you've got and I'm gonna cut 
cover my stamp with it. You might have to twirl it around a little bit, but you can see it's already starting to make a flower shape just on my plate. That's already a beautiful flower. And once you got paint on all those little bits, then you're just going to take it and stamp it down on your paper. You may need to make sure that they all stick down so that the paint goes on the paper. But it doesn't have to be perfect, see? It doesn't have to be perfect at all. And I'm going to take another yellow. And I'm going to get that all over my little handy dandy stamper. Twirl it around in there. And then press that one down. Lift it up. By now you probably have Miss Courtney hands. I think I'm going to give it one more stamp just to try to get some more over on this side where there wasn't much. There we go. There's some flower. I don't know why there's no petal there. Okay. All right. Now. Like I said, you can take a marker and draw a green line coming down to make your stem. Or you can paint on your stem. I am going to use paint since I have it. But if I didn't have it, I would just use a marker. And you can make this as complicated or as easy as you want to. Your stem really just has to be one green line coming down from your flower. It's really not that complicated. But maybe you want to put a leaf on it. Maybe you want to put two leaves on it. your art so you make it how you want it. Alrighty. Now we are going to squirt our let me get this out of the way. I'm gonna use my dark brown over here. Work some out. Take my little Q-tip, dunk it in, and then just dot, 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 dot. Those are going to be your seeds. Mm. Let me see. You know me, guys. I like shiny things. I'm going to use a little bit of this bronze just because it's shiny. And I like things that shimmer. Yes, I know sunflower seeds are not copper colored, but it's my flower. I can make them how I want them. I can make them however I want to because it is my sunflower. All right, friends. And then you can go on to decorate it however you want. You could put some grass at the bottom if you want to or some dirt could even give it roots if you really wanted to. Growing out under the ground. It's 
your flower. Make it how you want to. All right. Thanks for crafting with me. All right, explorers. I hope you had fun doing the easy craft with me. But now we are going to get serious. Ready? We're going to make a tree that grows. I've done this for you guys in the explorers class, and you were delighted. So, I thought I could teach you how to do it yourselves. Now, I have a big piece of white paper from my sketchbook, but you can use any piece of white paper that you have, or really any piece of paper that you have. You're gonna start with your rectangle, and you are gonna fold the top down to the bottom. Just fold it in half. Does not have to be perfect. But I folded it in half. Okay? Now, you're going to take this piece and fold it back up. It does not have to be exact. You can do it however works for you. As long as you have folded it down once and then back up, you're good to go. Now, we're going to pretend that this is just one sheet of paper. And I, kind of by the bottom, I'm going to give myself some ground. Maybe give myself some grass coming up out of the ground. It's your picture. Make it how you want. I am going to give myself a nice bright sun up in the sky because we know now that plants need sunlight for photosynthesis, right? All right, now here's where it's going to get tricky. From my ground, I'm going to make a line going up. I'm going to make my line kind of fat because it's going to be the trunk of your tree. You can make your line however you want. And then from where the paper folds, from where that line was, I'm going to go up and I'm going to make some branches. And just make a V if you want to. See? Doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's already smudged. And you can put some leaves on your tree if you want to. My tree needs leaves for photosynthesis. And at the bottom, coming down under the ground. I'm gonna make some squiggly lines for the roots of the tree. Cause remember the roots of the tree are what hold it down in the dirt. And soak up the water from the earth. Now, I'm gonna open this up. Speaking of water, I'm going to make some raindrops because we know trees need sun and trees need water. So that water is going to fall down in the form of rain, soak into the ground, and the roots are going to soak it up. Now, it looks like my tree is just growing in the air now, right? So I want to connect this part of my tree to this part of my tree. Fill in my trunk. And in here, I'm going to give it some more big branches. And put some leaves on those branches. It doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be perfect. 
I do want you to get the concept that trees have a trunk. You can label these if you want to. They have leaves. And they have roots down at the bottom okay and they need sunlight and water and air just like we do so now you have your lovely tree and you can fold it back the way you had it and it shrinks and then it gets the sunlight and the water and then it grows starts out just a little tree the sunlight and the water and it grows pretty cool right all right explorers that's your homework I can't wait to see it when we meet next week first it's little and it grows little and it grows pretty neat all right guys I love you. Thanks for crafting with me. All right, explorers, let's do our recap. We talked about plants. We talked about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. How's that for a long word? We talked about pollination and fertilization. germination, which is just new seeds sprouting and growing into new plants. We talked about chlorophyll, which is the green stuff in plants. And we learned the four kinds of green plants that make chlorophyll through photosynthesis. There's algae, which grows in water, just little teeny tiny. And these are gonna get bigger as we go. And moss, which is small green plants that grow along the ground and like really damp places. We talked about ferns that have been around since the dinosaurs and last but not least we talked about phanerograms which are flowers and trees and the kind of plants that we know about and then we talked about creepers that creep along the ground And climbers that like to climb as high as they can get so that they can try to get extra sunlight. We saw how leaves have veins in them, just like you have veins in your body. If you look at your wrist, you'll be able to see some veins. Your veins are part of your circulatory system. And this is what your circulatory system looks like. Those are all the veins running through your body. Look at that. And I 
promised you guys I would tell you more about my friend, the Pygmy Marmoset. Pygmy Marmoset is the smallest monkey in the whole rainforest, the smallest monkey in the whole wide world. And he likes to climb trees and he likes to hide in plants and he likes to eat fruit just like we like to eat fruit. But, you eat a lot of fruit, you're gonna have to go potty, right? Now, we go potty in the bathroom. Where do you think the pygmy marmoset goes potty? He just drops it on the floor of the rainforest right there on the ground and right there on the ground the seeds from the fruit he ate are in his poop and then they can grow they can grow into new plants so every time that pygmy marmoset eats a piece of fruit he's helping to grow more plants kind of silly but pretty cool anyway you guys I really love you and I really miss you and I had fun talking about photosynthesis with you today and I hope that you had fun too. I'll see you next week. I love you. Guys, this is my buddy Buster. Isn't he the cutest? He likes to climb on my computer while I'm trying to work. He likes to do that. He likes to get in the way all the time. I thought you might like to meet him.